There we go. So that's my brush rater window. Um, if you guys haven't used brush rater yet, that's another lifesaver. Um, Quadro reference viewer is a good one. And then brush rater is another good one just to kind of have your brushes organized because Lord knows Photoshop's um, brush preset system is not very robust. Anyway, I've got a bunch of different brushes that I can choose from in here and they're all organized. You can do it by um, thumbnails. You can do it by stroke. A preview you can do it by name and you can color code the names and you can do you can put different tabs for different types if you're doing decals or vents um, all that good stuff so we'll go back to base shapes here no I want to go back to brushes and uh, we'll kind of live in here um, for a little bit and what else are we gonna do let's do a weapon real quick and by real quick I mean Probably not that quick because it's been a while, but what we're gonna do is go to, I'm gonna load up this other program called Brainstormer. I'm gonna throw this to the top here. And just really quickly, we're gonna play around with a little bit of Brainstormer. Move this down. Okay, everybody see that? So basically what Brainstormer is, is uh, you can click on this horizontal or vertical or box and it'll brainstorm thumbnails for you. And oh, awesome! And yeah, that yeah, that GDC talk is still pretty relevant. I keep waiting for all those things I wanted, like automatic game reses and awesome UVs. It's we're getting closer, but <laughs> not quite there yet. I still don't have my Star Trek Enterprise, but one day. Um, so we got horizontal, vertical, and box, and you can hit brainstorm, and that'll just kind of brainstorm through them. If you click construct, that'll kind of pull all of these together. And if you turn on rotation, it'll pull them all together and give it random rotation as well. So it's a really quick um, thumbnail generator. And of course you can go in here and click individual pieces all you want. And in here you can actually rotate, scale, and rotate and scale and move. <laughs> you can do all of that stuff. Uh, usually I have rotation off if I'm doing a weapon and I'll have it horizontally if I'm doing a weapon and really uh, I don't even need it this complicated if I'm doing a weapon. Usually weapons aren't overly complicated like this, so you can do just weapon thumbnails all day long. Um, I'm going to turn off construct, and you can just kind of click through, and you'll see automatically like 10 awesome weapons out of all these. So if you like these, you can actually zoom in and zoom out here. Um, if you like these thumbnails, or if you want to go in here and rotate them or whatever you want to do, or put two of them together here, you can do that if you want to kind of play around with this. Um, you are happy, you're more than happy to do that. Um, but what I'm gonna do is just take these thumbnails and this little out arrow here, I'm gonna click that and I'm just gonna save those and I'll save, it'll open the folder for you. And another cool thing about this program is if you click on this little gray thing right here, that'll change it to uh, greeble mode, I guess. I don't know what it's really called, but it looks like greebles to me. So now you can cl click brainstorm and you can kind of see different shapes kind of start popping up. Now these are really overcomplicated, but that's actually not a terrible thing because you're gonna go in and you're gonna simplify what you need out of these things. These are just a way to break my brain. If I go into ZBrush and start making a weapon, I can do it, but I, I sometimes get caught in a rut where I'm just constantly doing the same thing over and over again. I'm pulling in meshes and I'm not really changing my shape language all that much. So this is a really quick and easy way. Now I say quick and easy, I'm gonna be talking a lot because I'm a blabbermouth, um, but if you're sitting down and you're really cranking through these, you can do tons of different versions. In fact, I'll open up some that I've done before. They're just really quick, quick and easy to go through and just make um, brainstorm. And before I take credit for this, um, Google, let me see if I can find it here, uh, Brusherator. And then the thing I'm using now is Brainstormer. Um, and these are both found on, well, Brush Raider, I'm not sure about. Uh, Brainstormer, I think, was a uh, Gumroad purchase. And um, so now with these things, if you hit Construct, you'll see all the cool construction shapes with this here. Uh, of course, Rotation and then Thumbnail as well. But we'll go ahead and turn off Construct, and we'll just kind of brainstorm a couple different things here. These look pretty cool. All these look cool. I can do something with any of these. So we'll go ahead and we'll split these out too. And we'll go and paint on these a little bit. Um, so we've got that. 
No problemo. And oh, another thing I was going to mention is if you Google um, basically everything I'm doing tonight, I watched from this guy's video. Um, I'd forget his name, but he he goes through and he does the exact same thing I'm doing. Um, I do a, a couple things a little bit different, but the same basic idea is there, which is I'm going to close out Brush Eraser, and then I'm just going to drag in our thumbnails that we were talking about, and I'm going to make sure you guys are seeing what's in Photoshop. Good. Um, I'm sorry, that wasn't Brush Raider, that was Brainstormer. Now, Brush Raider is this thing right here, which is the, um, you know, if you want to paint bolts, you can grab your bolt brush and you can go in and paint some bolts. You got some cables uh, you can paint on. Now, these, all of these decals and stuff I got off Gumroad. Um, it was like a 3D package. I wish I could remember the name. I'd have to go through my Gumroad emails. Um, but it's basically somebody went in and modeled a bunch of stuff. So you can use these as height maps in ZBrush or um, kind of interesting shapes in um, Photoshop, obviously. That kind of stuff. So anyway, uh, we'll go back to our base brushes here. And I'm just going to do like a square, like a square brush, like so. Uh, one thing to note, when you're doing like this kind of, these pills kind of things, um, always save your brush preset without any you guys aren't gonna see this. I don't want to make another window for the brush menu. But when you go to the brush menu and you see shape dynamics, make sure that's turned off. It's a lot easier to have just none of your brushes with any shape dynamics turned on. And then if you want them turned on, click this little button up here, which is hover over it. Uh, always use pressure for size. So you can toggle off, you know, if I want pressure for this brush, I can put that button on. If I don't, by default, just leave it off. It's a lot easier to just toggle that button on and off as you need it than it is to mess around with multiple versions of something for one with brush size on, one with brush size off, uh, controlled by your um, pen pressure. Um, maybe let me make let me let me go ahead and do a little advertising for him because I feel bad if I bring it up and then uh, <laughs> uh, let's see Gumroad. Intro Zebra. This is all my stuff. Thanks everybody who purchased my Gumroad stuff. Uh, there's a lot of free stuff on Gumroad too. You don't have to buy anything. You can just go in there and check it out. Um, 3D art resources maybe. I kind of just go through and buy stuff on Gumroad and then never end up using them. Or if I, you know, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Uh, no, this is a uh, ADN modeler, which when we get into Maya and Booleans, we'll talk a little bit more about him. It would be um, alpha update. Let's see what that has. View product. Is this it? I'll send you guys a link if this is it. Uh, uh, open, open. Okay. See if this works for you guys. That's where I got it from. And like I said, you can pull them into ZBrush and, as Z alphas and uh, plug them in. You can use them in here. I, I don't get a whole lot of use out of them because, again, I don't do a whole lot of 2D concept art stuff. But, you know, check those out. They might be worth something to you. Um, anyway, so we got our thing in here. And now I'm going to take my square soft brush, which, again, is just a square brush that kind of does this number. And let's go ahead and hit F. So we can kind of move this thing all the way around, control plus to kind of zoom in a little bit. And we'll take one of these things and we'll just take it to completion tonight, maybe. Let's take this one, it's pretty cool. So I'm just gonna hit crop. I'm just gonna crop this thing out. Now, of course, you could paint all of those. In fact, while I got you here, let me see if I have any on my, oh, I do. Okay, so I got a bunch. So these are all a bunch that I did just over time. Oh. I guess I didn't need to open all of them. Let's do window, arrange, float all in windows. Oh, and now when they're all floated in windows, you won't see them. We'll just close them all. I'll just open a couple, how about that? So here we got this one. I'll just bring in a bunch of different types, these kind of pistols here. So basically what the end result's gonna be it's something like this, where it's just kind of the, you know, if we're doing a pistol shape, we'll start doing some rifle stuff. Oh, God, is it still doing it all? Okay, you know what? 
screw this. You guys don't even see it when I open. You know, I like OBS. It's pretty cool, but sometimes I wish it was more like Camtasia where I could just, and I guess there is an option for just capturing an entire quadrant, but there we go. Now you can see it. Now you can see. Awesome, Thor. Thanks for showing up. Um, glad, glad it's worth worth your while. Um, I can't say it'll always be worth your while. There will probably be some really, really boring stuff I get into, uh, especially if uh, I'm not feeling it, because that, that could happen very well tonight, where I just I try and concept something and it's just like garbage. But you know, at least we'll talk about brushes and techniques and stuff, and you might get something out of it too. Uh, so here's kind of a little alien one. Here's just a kind of a basic sci-fi assault rifle. Here's a just a cool little weird pistol LED thing. Uh, a couple different pistol variants. So basically, we're going to take this shape and we're going to do something that can be held by a human being. So we're going to need a grip or a stock and a trigger guard and a forward grip maybe if we're doing an assault rifle. I haven't decided yet. But regardless of what we're making, it'll be grounded in some sort of reality. It won't be completely like District 9. Um, you know, you, where you can't really tell what it is. Let's make sure you still, okay. Um, anyways, so what we're gonna do, let me open up. Um, let me go to my drive here. I wonder if I have just a, I guess I don't need anything specific. Let's do a rifle. Just like a basic rifle with like a stock or something and we'll just kind of go from there. So with this, let's go ahead and do image canvas size and we'll kind of we'll dock it here and we'll do a width we'll kind of just crank up that thing because I, I can see this thing getting a little bit longer there's not a whole lot here I, could, I might have picked a, a poor one here so really all we need to do is let's take this I'm gonna duplicate this and then let me make sure you guys can see okay yeah and I'm gonna flip this horizontally and I'm just gonna do a multiply and now we've got a little bit more to kind of work with here. So I said, yeah, weapons don't need to be complex. Just pick a simple one. And I'm like, well, actually, I'm, I need I need something here. So I'm going to kind of put these here. Actually, we'll do normal. And then I'm going to hit W. We'll go into here. And we'll just delete that. That work. Okay, that'll give me something to go on. So I'll merge these down. We got brush, so we can start brushing here. And we're just getting our basic shape in. So let's say we're pointing this away, and we're gonna need uh, first thing a stock, and then a trigger guard, and then a handle in here. So I can just kind of start fudging those shapes in there. I don't have to really pull from these things. If I see anything interesting in here, I'm definitely going to. Um, use it, but what I'm going to do instead is uh, we'll just like pull out a handle here, and I guess this could maybe be uh, like an interesting kind of re you know mag out here. We can try that. So we can kind of maybe put a magazine poke in here. Maybe it's back further back, or if we want to, we can put it out front. Uh, we can we can certainly throw uh, some sort of buttstock back here. In fact, if we take this, we can just take something from it. We can throw this back here. And actually, let's move this forward just a little bit here. And we'll fill this with, come on. There we go. All right, so we got our buttstock here. Uh, this could be some sort of scope. So I can kind of maybe move this, maybe up here. So we got to think about kind of the mechanics of it. Ooh, that's another thing I can bring up. Um, I brought this up in one of my early live streams. I ended up trashing, I think. But let's look at some guns real quick. You guys down for that? I'll launch something real quick. We can check out how things work. As long as I don't have to get anything new from Steam. Where's it at? I don't launch Steam very much. Updating Steam information, sorry. 
I guess we can close Marvelous Designer. Let's go ahead and shut that down. Play a game. So this one is basically um, a 3D representation of a bunch of different types of weapons. And you guys can see that, right? Yes. So now I'm like a real Twitch streamer. I've got video games up. I'm talking on Twitch. I'm like a real pro. Uh, I don't know how you guys are seeing that. I assume you guys can. Um, it's showing up in OBS. Okay, so escape from that. So let me in. Continue. Thank you. So you've got this huge map of weapons in here. If you want to see, uh, hold on, let me desktop audio down and let me go to, I should have opened this up before I started. Uh, I don't go in here enough to go to my preferences. What are you doing? All right. Well, I assume you guys don't hear the music. Even if you do, it's okay. So we're going to go to, um, by alphabet. Now let's give you list and we can kind of just go through here and they have it all broken up into different categories here. You can go by country, you can go by manufacturer, time period, category. So let's look at some assault rifles here. Let's do the uh, FN SCAR. We'll load that up. And once that's ready, we'll go into operation. All right. So now we have uh, the actual gun in here and you can go into uh, x-ray and you can, it'll turn on like x-ray modes. You can kind of see the internal workings and then you can just click um, fire down here to fire. And as you, as you're firing, you're seeing what these internal mechanisms do. Um, let's go ahead and do cutaway. So with cutaway, you can actually slice open the entire side of this weapon and you can kind of look in here. And when I fire, it goes a little bit fast. So all you need to do is go to slow and we're going to go slow like 10. And now when we fire, you're going to see the magazine, the little spring pops up, the bullet comes into this little chamber here and it fires and then the shell ejects from there. Boink. There you go. So you can kind of see the internal workings. Um, you can also do cutaway, not cutaway, you can do um, you can hold down alt and anything you roll over, you'll see like, this is the magazine. This is the pistol grip. This is the right fire selector level and the magazine release right and all this other stuff. You're also going to see down here on the left, you can turn on. Um, so here's the little cheek pad, I guess you can turn the safety on and off. You can do the forward grip. You can screw that on. Actually, let's turn slow down. Okay. You can do change that little handle thing here. You can turn the sights up or down, plop in a laser sight, flashlight, um, stock adjust here, aim point, rear sight up and down. So you can kind of look through here and you can flip that rear sight up and down. You can fold this thing and then you can do click away. So uh, click and hide. So if you're like, you know what? I want to know what's behind this receiver here. So you can click that and now you can kind of see through and you can see the trigger. So as you um, kind of click through, you can start disappearing some of this stuff here. Um, let's go to, let's grab this one and we'll go to operation and you can assemble these things. You can, um, so we've got this thing here. Uh, let's see how this thing fires with cutaway. No, oh, this one only has click and hide. So we'll do click and hide. So this has a, a magazine feed that comes in from the top. So when this thing fires, let's slow that down. That thing pops up. So basically what we're looking at here is, you know, you have some sort of um, mag that feeds bullets into some sort of system where it pushes the bullet through and the, the thing fires and then it ejects from somewhere if it's, you know, bullet fed. So anyway, this is a really good <coughs> resource. 
and it's not just rifles. It's, sorry, the music is messing me up. It's not just rifles. There's like huge. There's historical things, bolt action stuff. There's rocket launchers, grenade launchers, um, old big World War Two stuff. When this thing fires, yeah. So let's do uh, click and hide. You can kind of see how this mechanism works here. So, and we'll slow it down a little bit. So it loads in through here. fire it rocks it back this thing has a little spindle that thing flips forward pops the shell out cool stuff uh, this is world of guns you can get it on steam and that'll just kind of give you cool mechanisms to think about or at least like you know if you have a re magazine here the bullets feed up this way and then it fires through here so it has to have a straight line you know, just the basics of weapon design, the, just the pure basics. You can get as complicated as you want. Um, we'll go ahead and shut that down here. Uh, yeah, so we got our kind of a buttstock going here and then kind of a sight going here. And then this we can probably just get rid of here and all of this stuff. You know what? Let's flip this on its side here. Let's take this. And we'll just rotate this around and we'll stick this here. And then we'll kind of fit that in there. Now, again, this is looking super complicated, um, but that's okay. We'll get it figured out. So we'll go through here and we'll kind of paint this stuff back. Now, yeah, if this is actually the site and you're going through, you need, you're going to need to see all the way back down. So I'm going to make this bigger and let's get rid of all this stuff. There we go. So now uh, we can start painting in, like possibly a mag could end up down here. And we're at zero, zero. There we go. <clears throat> so we can do this. Now we're also going to need some sort of uh, trigger in here so we can actually, you know, maybe pull out. And I mean, you can get a sci fi and as fancy as you want to, or you can do old school. You can use Quadro or bring in another layer of an actual gun and just take complete that's what I did on those old western guns um, that I kind of brought in is just take old western guns and just overlay them on here temporarily and then just kind of take the hand placement and the um, where the triggers and stuff go so we've got this going here so we'll go ahead and we'll just push this straight through and this is kind of a cool thing maybe we can um, Try taking this, pop that over there maybe. We'll see. Um, so yeah, just looking at shapes here, we've got our stock going and we'll kind of curve this around a little bit. And again, all of this is pretty much probably gonna end up being simplified quite a bit here. You know, all of this can just be painted over. Um, if you see any cool shapes, for sure keep them. And this is just a way to kind of let those shapes maybe dictate something interesting you wouldn't have done normally. Um, go ahead and just put a straight line through here, and here, and then we can, um, you know, okay, so the magazine comes up here, a bullet feeds through here. Um, this can be kind of maybe a support bar. You can kind of chop this out maybe. And then we'll go ahead and just simplify some of these shapes here. And kind of like that shape here. So we can maybe leave some of this. And then these panels we can just start simplifying. So let me look up a just a like Google rifle. Not Rigel. And I'm just going to look, oh my god, I'm having a hard time tonight, I need to go to bed. 
I'm basically just looking at like basic receivers and uh, just kind of maybe some details. Yeah, that's a good one. Google, help me out. Every time I'm streaming and I go to Google Images, it's always like the worst results. Any other time, it's fine. Let me do. There we go. Okay. Something a little more modern. Okay. So uh, I know you guys can't see this, but it's basically just a modern assault rifle from something. I don't know what. So, but anyways, I'm just kind of looking at where things are going to end up going as far as like rear sights here ish. You can have the Picatinny rails along the top here. So if we wanted to add a rail to put stuff, we could put a rail system right through here. And then I'm going to use my dots, space dots, turn that off. And we can just kind of run space dots through here. And then we can just take our square saw that we're using and we can just kind of trim these down just to kind of get a rail system in there real quick. Now it looks like, you know, these things kind of sit on top of there like so. Um, so yeah, we'll just take this here and we'll simplify some of these panels again. So yeah, it looks like on the back of this receiver, back of the receivers are usually pretty simple. So we'll just kind of paint out. We don't need a big vent or anything. We can carry this shape through here maybe. And we can always go back in and add more detail or um, remove detail as we go. So we'll kind of paint this in. Now this magazine, if we are going to keep it back here, is going to need some sort of housing. So I'm going to kind of block that in here underneath. And then this is kind of an interesting shape maybe. We can try it. Then we can also start maybe putting in a little bit of shadows here to separate some of these forms a little bit. And this almost looks like a side rail, so I'm actually going to keep that. That could maybe work. And then under here, we can make this a little darker. And I like this side rail. I'd not really like this side rail that much. We'll kind of kill that. And this kind of is working and so I can take this if I want to extend this all the way down I can just copy paste transform and just yank that all the way down there let's continue that barrel and then I can move this thing down to make it look like it's gonna go straight out and then maybe I can uh, yeah we'll just put in a little dark thing here. So that'll be where it ejects and I don't know what this thing does. You know what, maybe this doesn't even go on there. We'll play with that a little bit here. So these kind of shapes here. We'll simplify this a little bit and we'll put in a panel here. And this little back piece here. Yeah, I think all of this can probably be simplified. We can put like a little, I mean, it kind of looks like these things are kind of hinges. So we can maybe put, let's merge all this down. Maybe another hinge over here. And then we'll kind of bridge those hinges. Save often. How are we doing on questions, anything? Cool, cool. Yeah, that uh, world of guns is um, really, really cool. And if I was doing, if I wasn't being scrutinized by people on Twitch, I would probably be thinking like, um, yeah, the aliens gun. You know, that's a really cool thing to kind of bring up and use as inspiration and kind of pick shapes from them. Um, right now, I'm looking at just a regular assault rifle, which is also not probably not a bad idea because it'll take your sci-fi and just ground it just a bit. Um, but if you're doing something really grounded, obviously you're gonna need to pick and choose um, a little bit harder 
you know, some of these shapes are obviously kind of out there. That's okay. We're just having fun tonight. Now, if we ever do this for real, like if I want to use something for my sci-fi lady I'm doing on the Pixelogic stream, um, we can do that for sure. And that's probably where I'll start. In fact, we'll also do some robots. I need to make some robots uh, pretty soon. So we'll start with uh, Brainstormer just to for, for kind of thumbnails. And you'll see this thing over here is a little um, Brutus symmetry uh, thing for Photoshop. Uh, it's okay. Um, but when we get into symmetry, it's actually pretty nice to go into um, ZBrush and just use their uh, local, their symmetry and their, um, what's it called? Their radial symmetry and their just regular symmetry. It's pretty robust. So we got some panels here. And let's go ahead and I'm going to darken up some of this stuff here and here. And we'll simplify this just a little bit more. Let's look again what we got on here. So on these rifles here, it seems like they have some stuff that goes. Kind of maybe darken this a bit. That's a good question. Um, the more sci-fi I get, the more it becomes more like, uh, it's got some LEDs on it. So it fires, um, you know, my own, my own sense of self-worth at people. But, you know, this one does look a little bit more bullet fed here. I'm thinking about changing the magazine placement. It's kind of weird back there. I mean, it's not weird. There are some back here, but you know what? Just to kind of make a change, let's go ahead and take that off and let's see if we can steal Maybe this here. Let's see how this plays. And we'll put this, uh, you know, now this trigger guard is way forward. So what might help, I'm gonna keep this separate for now. I'm gonna go ahead and do, let's put in a handle real quick. So here, we're gonna need some sort of handle here. So we're gonna put this right in here. And then the trigger guard will be right off of here. And then our magazine will be right in front of that. And our magazine here can kind of get plugged right up in here. I kind of, do I like? I guess that's okay. We'll stick that right there. And now we can kind of just brush these together and maybe pull this panel down. And of course the magazine's just gonna be popped right out of here. And we'll get a really wide magazine. It'd be big old bullets. All right, make that a little darker here. And we'll say that comes out in front. This gets pushed in front. This will have a little thing here. And then we'll put in a little slide thingy in here. Maybe pop out a little button. What else? Okay, so now that everything's kind of blocked in here, now we can go in and start cutting in some panel stuff that we might need, some grip stuff we might need. Trigger. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, if you fire anything hard enough, it'd probably be pretty deadly. Let's see, so this will come down here. We'll go ahead and make this a little darker. This panel can carry over. 
like so. Okay, so now uh, what's next? So we got our thing up here. Uh, we got our shapes going, uh, panel lines and highlights. We can do with just, um, let's do a square, let's do a hard round. Let's see how this treats us. So we can go in here and start cutting in. I was holding down Alt, by the way, to make changes to my brush size here. And let's go ahead and turn on a little bit of brush pressure sensitivity. Let's do square hard, maybe. I still like using that square brush. Kind of cut some stuff in here. Where's my rifle at? Ooh, this is a cool one. I'm sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm just kind of flipping through um, different references here. So this is like a Beretta one here. And these butt stocks are usually pretty plain Jane. So I'm just going to, we'll keep the hinge in there, I suppose. Like it's doing something. And then we'll just take a really dark value and maybe we'll split off. Here, maybe this will come up here. And we can put in a little bit of an indication of rubber grip. Okay, um, let's see if this needs something. So this back here could maybe come down. And this is okay. And by okay, I mean it's passable. I'm not falling in love tonight. My brain is so gone, you guys. It's like, I can barely even see right now. Uh, 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 yeah, it's okay. I've been, uh, like I said, I was uh, revamping some of my CGMA courses, so we're doing, um, I'm uh, kind of updating the Zebra. It's going to be concept, rapid concept iteration production ZBrush something or other. So I'm kind of going through the um, intro to ZBrush videos and I'm condensing, I'm re recording a lot of that stuff to kind of condense it down and kind of focus it. Uh, into a really tight, um, tight course for the CGMA folks, and it's going pretty good. Um, just a lot of recording, you know. I I'm at work all day, and then I come home really quick, sneak out, and come home and record, and then I hop on streaming here. Uh, but this is a little bit more relaxing, although sometimes it can be really nerve wracking too. Anyway, whatever this thing's supposed to be. Rear, rear folding sight. Does it have a rear folding sight? Yeah. Okay, so in this case, we'll steal a little idea from here. So we'll put a little thing here and maybe a little wheel and then maybe curve this a little bit. So there's its rear folding sight and then it's got kind of a scope thing that's really small. Let's embiggen this real quick. Give it a little split, maybe. And then a forward sight, these things will usually have, or some sort of A-frame, maybe. And kind of maybe squeeze something on there. Now, you probably wouldn't have all of these going at once, um, but just for our purposes here, we'll just throw something on there real quick. All right, nice and muddy. Good enough. All 
All right, Nightman, thanks for stopping by. Um, we're going to keep rocking some shapes. Well, actually, what time is it? Uh, how, what are we going to keep rocking? Okay, it's 10 o'clock. we got another hour. Uh, panel lines, we've kind of done. Highlights, I'm going to leave alone for now. Um, lighting direction, so you can do dodge and burn to kind of put in a little bit of lighting here. So you're near this area here, we're going to do the dodge tool. And we'll do midtones. We'll do highlights. So you can kind of go through here. You can kind of put in a little bit of lighting along the tops, obviously, or wherever you think light would fall. It's to kind of sell the roundness of some of these shapes. And again, some of these are really, really rough shapes. Uh, I'm not going in and detailing all that stuff. And then we'll go in with our burn tool. And we'll kind of, and of course, uh, we'll get to other like overlays and color dodges and color burns as well. But now we're just going to kind of go in here. And this is, we'll do shadows, we'll do midtones as well. Uh, maybe even highlights. Kind of switch between those as needed to kind of start darkening areas or pushing panels back or pulling some forward. Let's do shadows and we'll separate this a little bit more. I'll put a big here and then we'll go back to our square soft brush square soft thank you and again that's brush eraser if you want to look that up it is highly highly useful a little unnatural. Let's do, let's blend these together. And then maybe Um, so then, yeah, we talked, now you can also go in here, I have a super soft brush, and you can um, go in here and kind of paint in any glows or any light stuff you do, you can also put on a screen layer, but I think we're okay on that. Um, we can stamp some stuff in, uh, I have these stamp brushes, I don't know where I got them, like I've been collecting brushes for so many years, it's ridiculous. I'm going to turn off pressure sensitivity. And I'm going to make a new layer, and we're going to call this an overlay layer. And I can kind of go in here and kind of stamp in just some panel cut lines. Now, of course, these are on a separate layer, so I can go through and I can delete what isn't kind of working for me. A little bit, so I'm going to go hit E, and then anything that kind of bugs me, kind of back that out. And I can kind of use those as... indications of where I might want this cut lines kind of does some interesting stuff in some of these areas here not so interesting in others let's tighten this up zoom in a little bit so this is a rear folding site here uh, okay, there it is. So it'll be kind of like, of course, we're only seeing it from the side view here. this, something like this. And kind of use 
some of these. Let's go ahead and erase. So now that I can, now that I've zoomed in, I can kind of see it a little bit better. I'm going to merge that down and then take cues from some of these. Square soft zero. Move this magazine real quick. Okay, we'll just tighten this up just a little bit. if you want to photo bash as well by all means I should probably just go grab a picture of a magazine and paint it in as opposed to always sitting here and recreating it or make a brush for a magazine but we're keeping it loose and like I said I don't really do that this often so bear with me alrighty so I got this thing now Let's um, let's go ahead and another thing that the uh, the cube brush guy had on his YouTube video was a gradient overlay. So what I'm going to do, and it, it worked really well. So we'll do a gradient map here, and we'll double click this. And oh, can you guys even see this? Because it's another window. Hold on. Of course not. This is kind of important. Let me add another window here. There we go. So this is the thing I'm in right now. So you're going to see as I make changes to this gradient, um, it's going to do things to my image here. So if we take, um, for example, this black here, actually, let's cancel that. So if we do this one, you're going to see the dark values are going to be yellow, the midtones are going to be go purple to orange, and then the light values are going to go blue. So you can kind of go through here and you can kind of see, um, let me see, does this preview? Can I turn that on and off? I think I used to be able to. You can kind of click through here and see what all these things do. Um, this is kind of just a muted sepia tone where it goes from dark to dark brown to light blue to light gray to light blue here. So we can kind of just get um, kind of a scruffy looking uh, weapon going here. And we'll just go ahead and merge that down. And um, I guess I can close down my reference. Don't really need to see that anymore. And then we'll add some decals here. So if we go into here, let's go back to uh, these brushes here. I'm going to do another layer and we'll do another overlay. And this time we'll do, let's grab a really bright orange maybe. An overlay may not work. It might be a little too subtle in here. I guess it'll work okay. So we can kind of start stamping in maybe some of this sci-fi stuff. <laughs> and you can see how ridiculously uh, nonsensical I am with this stuff. But really it's just, again, it's breaking my brain out of, because if I just stamp things or use Brush Eraser or just pump something on there, uh, it was B stuff I wouldn't, if I sat down and thought about it, it would end up being really dull. Uh, forcing this type of thing, um, you know, forces me out of my, my usual zone and then I can kind of pick shapes out of here that are interesting or not, maybe. And I can also go through here and I can kind of, if this is actually painted on, you can go through the edges here and you can kind of scrape down like where these panel lines are and kind of scrape up this paint a little bit if this is just painted on stuff. Um, then we'll do some overlay and color dodge and LEDs. So when we go into LEDs here we can try some of these pills. So I'm just going to go to a new layer 
and we can start putting in, uh, let's go to brush here, it's a little big, so you can start peppering in these LEDs like this, so I've got a pill forward slash, I've got a pill vertical, pill horizontal, and a pill backslash, and then if you also want to do like um, horizontal this way or this way, it's kind of up to you. You can kind of start seeing if there's any place for like maybe a couple LEDs. Let's go ahead and change our color maybe to an orange here. And we'll do, and if we can also go, you won't see this, but you go into your brush settings and change your spacing, and then you can kind of drag out a little closer. That's the other thing too, if you want to just start cutting through like you, um, let's do that. So I'm going to go to square soft and we'll fill out this rail a little bit more. And in order to cut down the weight on this thing, what we're going to do is do a pill horizontal with the background color. And then we can just kind of cut through, put some big old cuts in there. So it just lightens that metal up considerably. Um, whoops. Get my ZBrush hotkeys in my brain for some reason. That's another thing that I'm transitioning from different uh, packages, like from Marvelous Designer to Maya to Fusion 360 to ZBrush. Oh boy, it does a number on my brain, depending on how much sleep I got. Sometimes it takes me a few minutes to go, okay, wait, how do I, what program am I in? What am I doing? There, that'll work. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit clean this up a little bit a little raggedy not that it's I mean it's such a weird like beat up old sci-fi gun that obviously I can get away with being a little raggedy not a big deal um, but now we're gonna put another layer in here and we'll call this we'll grab our super soft and we'll throw it on a color dodge layer and we'll kind of just we can kind of brush in some LED lighting maybe kind of ramp, pop those a little bit. So those are some nice sh bright shiny LEDs. In fact, I have a lens flare brush here. So we can kind of make this big and go pow. You got that JJ Abrams thing going on. And this is actually pretty cool for just like getting some, get some lighting going, kind of putting some hot, hot stuff on your little, uh, your little shiny bits. Um, we'll go ahead and put a lens flare right down the middle of that because we're cool like that. And then we'll do, Let's do super soft on this color dodge, and we'll grab some blues. We can start lightening up uh, some of this. Actually, let's make it a little warmer. I'm trying to get to where. Yeah, because right now it's a little, it's pretty subdued. So you can kind of go in here and start popping it like it is actually getting maybe a sunset on it. A little bit of environment lighting going on. And then uh, we'll, we'll also throw on a overlay layer. With our square soft maybe. And then you can kind of also grunge it up. Uh, I don't really have any good grunge brushes loaded. I need to do that still, just to get some grungy stuff going. My phone's going crazy. Messages and messages. Um, let's see what overlay does with this color. That puke. Gross. Uh, let's go back to color dodge here. So with color dodge is really good at kind of lightening um, some areas up. Let's go back to that soft brush. We'll do a bluish tint. all these down and I'm going to go back in with my 
burn tool and we'll just kind of whoa let's do soft round and we'll drop that exposure way down Um, LED's lighting effects, and then we would just block this weapon out. It's good enough. It's kind of, it looks semi-functional. Uh, let's see what I missed here. Um, yeah, I, I say go ahead and post links. I mean, I'm talking about it, so I, I just didn't feel like Googling it, but, um, if it'll let you. I assume Nightbot's not going to be, actually, it's like, I'm so bad at this. Sorry, guys, I need to be better at Twitch and all the cool little cool little uh, moderator things and all that stuff I'm so bad at. I'm lucky I even am able to show up and stream for you guys. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, this dude. And he's got all these dancing birds all over his stuff too. Um, but, uh, you know, I can give you guys, you can, since you, while you can see Brush Raider, let me walk you through a little bit of it. It can sometimes be uh, a little bit weird. But basically, oh, it's actually been a while since I've made new brushes. Let me do, let's make a new brush. So I'm going to take Square Hard and I'm going to go into my brush presets here. Actually, you might not be able to see a lot of this because we're, Okay, so if I have a brush like this, and it does, oops, uh, we'll do hexagon, brush tip shape, we'll grab something crazy, I have a lot of Chinese characters on here as well, I forgot I was doing some weird stuff with that. Okay, so let's say this is my new brush that I made and of course I want to turn off always turn off uh, shape dynamics and uh, if you don't want it to kind of fade out turn off transfer as well so this is my new brush right so I'm going to go to my brush presets which you guys can't see but I'm just gonna go to brush new brush preset and we're gonna call this bolt test And then in my brush eraser window, I can right click and do add button. And uh, shoot, hold on. I hate having to do this window capture stuff all the time. There you go, you guys can see that. Um, so I can do add a new button and you can tell it, uh, it's gonna be a brush preset. So I'm gonna select from my brush preset. It's gonna be at the very bottom here. You can narrow it down by name. You can just type in the mask there. We'll grab bolt test and set, hit select. You can tell it, do I want it to be a text button where it's just a text button with a label and a color and you can color it gray or purple or whatever. You can um, have it previewed as an auto stroke or an auto tip or a custom image that you bring in. I'm just gonna do auto tip. Uh, the name on the panel, we'll just leave it as bolt test and we'll hit finish. And then that goes ahead and throws it in here. So if I alt tap here, that'll turn it into like editing mode. And now I can just drag these things around and kind of move them and snap them. Um, you can move them in between um, tabs here. So we just alt click here. And you can also just right click and go into edit mode, which is just alt click. And now I can kind of move this around. So now that I'm done, uh, I can go back to just being like, okay, I'm gonna paint with my square brush. Oh, you know what? I wanna use that brush and I'm good to go. Super useful. I think so. Uh, what else are we going to do? Um, all right, so we got a gun concept. I suppose we should save it. Um, I'll throw this on our desktop for now. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I'll call it Miscellaneous Sci Fi Gun. Yeah, my brain is mush too. I might call it, I might call it a little early tonight. How about I go till 10.30? Anybody have any questions about what we've done so far? Or uh, any ZBrush 3D stuff in general? Um, Marvelous Designer, ZBrush, what else do I do? I guess Painter, if you want to talk about that. <laughs> key shot, we can do some more key shot rendering. 
Yeah, it's been a long week, man. Let me tell you.